Hi everyone, uh, my name is Eva and I am a data scientist at Uber. And today I'm going to talk about the experimentation platform. So about me, um, I graduated from Cincinnati uh, with a bachelor's and master degree. And then um, right after college, I joined Amazon Video as a BI engineer at Seattle. And I have been at Uber for one year now. And I'm a data scientist uh, at the experimentation platform. And out of work, I am very interested in data visualization, and I maintain a blog of two years. Uh, on the right side is a map um, of the audience I reached in the past two years. So if you are interested in Tableau and data visualization, check it out. Um, so what is experimentation? Uh, first, uh, when we, this is the life cycle of a product. We first identify the opportunity, and then we make the prototype. And, um, we have this idea and we want to launch this experiment through our platform. And if this experiment is very successful, it becomes a feature and we launch it to all the app. And during this time, we want to refine and discover new opportunities. So what makes experimentation platform at Uber unique in the industry? So um, you, um, as a software engineer, he or she not only can launch experiment on our platform, but also launch a complete new feature and to 100% of the audience in the world. And second, we provide nearly real-time monitoring for the experiment health to increase the safety. Uh, we enable the experimentation platform in three apps, Rider, Driver, and Uber Eats. So this is very difficult for us because we have to make sure that the traffic of these three apps does not uh, conflict with each other. So uh, we want to provide the best uh, user experience for the software engineer at Uber and make their life easier to roll out an experiment. We provide three main tools to the software engineer and the uh, uh, marketing manager. So first is a web UI. On this web UI, you can create the experiment key, uh, select the audience, and chose the percentage between the control and treatment group, and chose which city you want to, you want to uh, impact, and just click a button, and this experiment is ready to go. And after you launch an experiment, you want to monitor the health. We have this R shiny dashboard to tell you the primary metrics and the second metri secondary metrics you want to look at. And everything is great. There was no crashes. There was no outage. And then at the end, you want to uh, do some post-experiment analysis. You can go to our tool and discover the business uh, performance metrics. So I'm going to tell you two stories about how our platform can help roll out the experiment in a scalable and a safety way. So the first story is the intelligence analysis tool. So this diagram, when the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this looks very pretty. But like, I want to tell you guys, none of this step is automated. It's all manual work. So when the CRM uh, manager have the idea of the experiment, they roll it out through our platform, and then they roll a query at the end of the week. And then they download the file as a CSV, and then upload it to the labs page, and wait for the labs scientists to review this uh, experiment performance. So it takes them 10 days to finish the review and get a result. And we want to change that. We look at our old tool, and then we find out that all the metrics we have are not the metrics the CRM manager are looking for. And we all store in Hive. We compute the p-value and variance all in Hive. And we want our new tool to be more flexible. To our, and we want this new tool is, uh, is available to everyone at the company. So we look at the architecture of our platform at the analysis, and we find and, and we notice that we look at like at the end of the vertical, this place we only use it to store data. We doesn't use it uh, to make our analysis tool before, and then we change it in this way. We no longer compute the p-value and variance and other statistical value on Hive. We we ba we basically increase this um, uh, speed uh, by using Scala. So um, I'm a data scientist, so I want to talk about the science behind this. Um, in our old tool, we only do real-time experiment analysis. So we use sequential tests. And right now, uh, we also do post-experiment analysis. And we, and we classify the metrics into three categories, proportion metrics, continuous metrics, and ratio metrics. So the first one is proportion metrics. And what is that? So proportion metrics would be like the number of uh, drivers who 
complete the first trip in 14 days, um, continuous matrix would be like the surprise hour of the driver in this experiment. And ratio matrix will be the matrix, the number of trips divided by the number of sections. And we have this um, uh, logic for that. And first, we just use chi-square. For the continuous matrix, we check the distribution first, and then we see if it fits into the t-test. And if it doesn't, we check if it uh, we can use binomial test and ranking test. And for ratio matrix, we, base, we use two main F, uh, methods. One is delta method and the mixed effect module. So in our new tool, all the statistical uh, computation is done in real time on the fly. It's extremely fast. And we also allow people to explore the data by different segmentation, for example, cities. And you don't need to, um, for the CRM manager, they don't need to write the SQL uh, queries anymore. And the data is as fresh as our data pipeline. So at the end, we reduce the analyst time from 10 days to eight hours. And the second story is stage rollout. Uh, so what is stage rollout? Stage rollout is the process that you want to uh, instrument the experiment and hit the target audience gradually from 10%, 5%, 20%, and then 100% at the end. And then we look at like uh, Uber's monitoring health system. And then we find like on the monitoring system, they have this formula. It's the number of crashes in the experiment divided by the number of crashes on the app. And then they get a percentage. But like, what's the problem of this? Because uh, the problem is that you will get 100% crash rate for all the experiment. It does not tell you which experiment has like the root cause and which experiment has the worst situation. So we want to change this. Um, another thing about the current monitoring health system is that um, they don't have any uh, business metrics for the driver behavior. For example, they don't look at the uh, number of trips, they don't look at supply hours. And third, the current uh, Uber reporting uh, health system didn't have any statistical value, they just have this formula. So uh, we want to change this. Uh, we want to use the data science to uh, give the software engineer to identify which experiment is the problem. So we use our existing uh, Hive uh, database combined with the R shiny dashboard and then present the results to the engineer. And um, first, we explore different algorithm. The first we use is t-test, and um, that is not very accurate. We only achieve 50% accuracy. And then we use the sequential test. It's still not good enough. And then at the end, we with like thousands of simulations, we found out that the sequential test with jackknife can help us to achieve 95% accuracy rate in predicting the outage. So um, there's another thing we improved uh, in our data size that the first one, we store the data in the user level. So what's the problem of this? You will see like two, uh, two or maybe like 100 sections are highly correlated with each other. And the reason why this happened is that it came from the same user. So of course, they are highly correlated. And then we use the sequential test. We only achieve 70% accuracy. And then we change the algorithm with a jet knife. And then we also change the data source to a session level. And we can uh, successfully predict the outage by 95%. So. Uh, for the primary matrix, uh, with a lot of experiments and simulation, we decide the three matrices for this. And a lot of companies are struggling in defining their primary matrix to identify the health of the experiment. So uh, this is a very short story about why segmentation and, um, the, uh, and, and our stage rollout dashboard is important. So usually, we don't see any correlation between the login rate and the number of trips. But like uh, we found an experiment, they are highly correlated between these two metrics. And we want to look at it, why? Because think about that, if you log in multiple times, it doesn't uh, necessary that you are going to complete more trips. But like in this experiment, we found these two metrics are uh, highly uh, the po positive correlated. And then we uh, segment it by city level, and then we found out that there was one city in Indonesia has this problem. The other part of the world are complete normal, and then we contact the city ops team there, and then we found out that like email was not highly adopted in a lot of uh, South Asian country. So the city ops um, launched the experiment there to allow people to use, uh, to use the uh, cell phone to log in. 
So um, the key takeaway of this story is that um, the experimentation platform acts like a messenger to deliver the alert to the software engineer. And second, like we are able to detect the regression and the correlation at 2000 trip in the story in Indonesia and preventing a full blown outage. And third, and this crash rate won't be detected by the current uh, Uber monitoring system, but on our dashboard. So um, experimentation platform is awesome. And like in the past one year, we reduced the accretion cost of the rider and driver and helped the CRM team to identify which process is the best uh, for onboarding driver and referring more rider on our um, app. And second, we improve a lot of reliability and safety of the app by the stage rollout project. And third, we discover a lot of impactful mobile experiment. And if you remember from Jennifer's uh, um, talk, there was uh, another hotspot pickup for Uberpool. That's also one of the experiment uh, launched on our platform before. And that's all. Thank you.